Hello, in today's video I will show you how it was possible to spy on people using desktop zoom application. The root cause of the vulnerability was insufficient protections against SQL injection in Linux and macOS clients. The issue was reported by Keegan Ryan. The links to his original blog post and his Twitter are in the description. You can go ahead and give him a follow. Enjoy the video. You can use Zoom MTG URI to open Zoom application from your browser. This link can also contain some parameters like meeting ID. And as you already know, this video is about SQL injection vulnerability, but this time it's a little bit different than usual. It's because we are looking for a vulnerability in desktop application, which means we are attacking the local SQL database instead of the one on the server. This means it will be a client-side attack and the attacker will have to fish the victim into clicking a malicious link, just like in a CSRF attack. It means that we have control over the application, so it should be a little bit easier than black box approach, but unfortunately it's not as easy as just reading the source code of compiled binary, because it's impossible. One of the easiest methods of taking a peek into a compiled binary is using a strings command. It prints any text included in the compiled binary. In this case, the researcher noticed some partial SQL queries with format characters, like percent %s. It's an indication that something might be wrong here, because the actual code could look like this. The next step is attaching a debugger, which will allow us to see which parameters from the Zoom MTG URI are actually used in the SQL queries. Using a debugger, you can set up a breakpoint on a particular function that you want to see, and when the code will get to that function, the execution will stop, and you will be able to see or modify any program's memory, including this function's arguments. But first, you need to find this function in the memory, which is not that easy. Luckily, one of the strings revealed a specific version of SQLite library used. It helps a lot, because it's open source and available on GitHub. It means you can see the body of a function, and for example by using strings inside this function, you can then find it inside the program's memory. Using this approach, the researcher identified a function SQLite free lock and prepare, which allowed him to see what actual SQL queries are executed. Turns out, that when you open a meeting using a link from the browser, multiple SQL queries are being done, but one of them looks like this and includes a TID parameter. So now what's left to be done is just inserting a single quote into the parameter and exploiting the SQL injection, right? It turned out to not be so easy, because Zoom had some protections against SQL injection vulnerability. It doubled the quotes used, which means that if you try to close the string, the zoom adds another quote, opening another string and making an invalid SQL syntax. It makes it almost impossible to break out of string context. And before we get to the bypass, let's see how ASCII and UTF-8 work. ASCII is a character encoding standard used to encode 128 characters as a text. For example, OX41 is a capital A and OX61 is a small a. But 128 characters offered by ASCII is simply not enough. We need a way to encode special characters or emojis, and that's where Unicode comes into play, or more specifically, UTF-8. The first 128 characters in UTF-8 work exactly the same as in ASCII. However, if the byte value is greater than OX81, it means that more than one byte is used to describe the next character. It means 
that if a UTF-8 decoder sees OX27, it just decodes it as a single quote, but if it sees OXC2, it looks for the next byte before presenting a decoded character. So coming back to the Zoom application, we can send a payload that looks like this. Backslash S tells the UTF decoder to treat the next sequence as a byte. But Zoom application does not decode it and add a second quote to protect against SQL injection. And that's a way how it sends it to the SQLite database. But then SQLite tries to decode it using UTF-8. And when it sees our C227 sequence, it decodes it to a paragraph symbol, leaving a single quote hanging. And everything after it will not be in a string context, which means that the SQL injection attack is successful. But what can you do with this local SQL injection? The attack scenario that the researcher came up with was changing the victim's settings. You can modify them so that the victim joins the meeting automatically without a prompt with a camera turned on. So first, you would have to send a victim a malicious link that would modify their settings. Then. After the victim reopens the Zoom application, the settings get applied and they join any meeting automatically with a camera turned on. This means that now every time you send them a Zoom link, you can basically spy on them using their camera. In a real world attack, I think you could introduce a small delay between clicking a link and opening a Zoom app to maybe catch them when they are away from keyboard. The report was triaged with high severity and it was rewarded $2,000. I think there are many takeaways that we can learn from this vulnerability. And if you have learned something from this video, leave a like and leave a subscription if you haven't already. For now, thanks for watching and goodbye.